Stay tuned, folks. Here's what's coming up next on the Wild West Crypto Show. Brent, let me tell you something. Boy, it's been a crazy week. Now, cryptos have been great. Oh, yeah. Oh, everything yeah. else is crazy. <laughs> Not forcing our players at all to download any dApps like MetaMask or anything like that. And the actual cryptocurrency, what we call INF, goes directly into the game account. I want to put a, a message out there and have a little conversation. Why don't we just meet in the middle? And what that basically means is that Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter, owns your ass, you know? If you say something that pisses him off, you're gone, right? Or he can shadow ban you. The views and opinions expressed by the host and the guests of the Wild West Crypto Show are just that, views and opinions. We do not give financial advice. We highly recommend anyone considering entering into this very volatile market seek the advice of a financial advisor and never risk more than you would risk on a roll of dice in Vegas. The Wild West Crypto Show is designed to entertain and inform our audiences. Thank you for tuning in. I've got no remorse. One nest egg looking pretty. Brent and Drew the boys show the world immutability. Jack and Hash is on the blockchain. Try not to be coy. The world says, short the banks, buy your Bitcoin. Folks, hey, welcome to the Wild West Crypto Show. I'm Drew. I'm Brent. Brent, let me tell you something. Boy, it's been a crazy week. Now, cryptos have been great. Oh, yeah. Oh, everything yeah. else is crazy. <laughs> you know? You know what? It's a full moon 24-7 here for the last week. No, I mean, it has been. Oh. Let me tell you, it's a crazy world we're living in. Listen, the financial, political, global, but let me tell you, it always happens. Calmer heads prevail. So don't go out there and get wild. Don't do anything ridiculous. Nope, nope, it just, nope. you know, it matter, matter of fact, you ought to think about it. That's why bears hibernate. <laughs> when, the, when when it starts getting cold, crazy cold, they just say, well, I'm going to go to sleep for a few that's months. It, that's you know? it for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So, Brent, man, uh, we're going to have a couple of great guests on the show oh, this yeah. week. Oh, yep. yeah. Uh, Chris Wood with Pixelmatic, an out-of-this-world crypto game. And we taped that interview earlier today, and it is out of this world. It's a, <laughs> you know, I, I'm not really sure that I can really get into the gaming aspect of it. But, you know, um, but I understand it's huge. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know what, Brent? Let me tell you what this reminds me of. State gaming, as big as it is globally, and then you throw crypto into it. People don't even realize it. It reminds me of the story of Wrigley's Gum. Oh, yeah. And so so back in the old days, if you watch on, on uh, History Channel, The Food That Built America, Wrigley didn't invent the chewing gum. Adams did. The people that made chiclets. What he did was Wrigley wanted to be the biggest soap maker in the world, but he threw in a piece of licorice gun with the soap orders and a year into his business, he's talking to his team and he said, Hey, so, uh, you know, what, which of our soaps is selling the best? They said, actually, nobody's ordering our soap, but they all want the gum. So he changed the business. So it just tells you that it means you got to be flexible if you're an entrepreneur. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. And we've got a Dan and Matt with three speak going to be on today. I don't know if it's one or both of them, but uh, those guys will be on. Of course, we have Jonathan with Cryptocurrency Wire. Three greatest stories in three crypto. Three greatest yep, stories in absolutely. crypto. Always good stories. And today we're going to have the good, the, the good, bad, and, and the, the good. good. <laughs> It's going to be, it's just a good deal. Sorry to throw you that loop. That's all right. <laughs> um, and of course, you're going to do your, your over the fence post on. Sure. Well, I'm not going to tell you. Okay. And I'm going to do my <laughs> cowboy logic on folks watching all this flooding and the message that from uh, uh, John Schneider. Folks, why don't we all try meeting in the middle? I'm going to talk about that oh, on my yeah. cowboy logic segment. So, oh, yeah. Well, you know, I, I remember I was in Chicago back when uh when obama was running yeah yeah and i was there for a cancer i was building a cancer center series of them and stuff and i was in there for a meeting and a young guy young black guy there in a shoe store i was buying some shoes for my wife yeah i uh, came up and when he found out i was from texas oh you know you gotta be from bush you gotta be you know they said no 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 if you're from texas you only have to do two things you only have to have two things that you're after that yeah. you love I says what's that i said beer and barbecue he said, oh, man, I, I like you. <laughs> there you and, go, you know, We man. need more of that beer and barbecue. You bet. Middle ground. Folks, stay tuned. Got a great show coming up. Wild West Crypto Show. Be back in two minutes. Howdy, folks. This is Drew with Wild West Crypto Show. And I have to tell you, if you found the best restaurant you've had in a long time, been to in a long time, you'd tell all your friends about it, wouldn't you? Well, let me tell you something. You've heard me complain many, many times about the robo calls that I get for car warranty products that are illegal to even do. And I've always thought that the entire industry was a bad one. And I was introduced to 
Patrick O'Brien. Patrick, how are you doing? Good, Drew. Thanks. Let me tell you something. <clears throat> Been in the business for over 30 years. You're the good guy in the auto warranty business like that really so. does it. So give us the highs and the lows, the good, the bad, and the ugly of the auto warranty business. Well, right now in the wa auto warranty space, the, the space is getting so inundated with people and marketing costs being what they are, is that the cost of these things, if you bought a service contract in the last 12 months, I guarantee you pay too much. Mm -hmm. And what you probably bought wasn't coverage that was good for you. It might've been great coverage from the standpoint of what it would do in terms of paying for a repair, meaning something broke down, but it doesn't cover you for the daily things that go on with the car. Now you think about your car, what do you have to have done? I gotta get maintenance performed, mm -hmm. right? I, I need to at least do that at once, maybe twice a year. You know, you're gonna be in a situation where you're gonna have a ding or a dent on your car. Yeah. I and mean, a lot of people I talk to say, I may as well just get a hammer and hit my car when I buy it, put the first <laughs> ding in it, cause I'm gonna get one. You know, all these different things happen to you all the way down to windshield re repairs and things that happen, tires popping and that type of thing. So when you look at these products and services, the one thing you have to understand is if you're paying a lot of money for them, they better cover everything. Right. What we see is that people are overcharging for these enormously. Yeah. Uh, and what we're, we try, we're trying to do from a product perspective is really put the people into a position where they can get good affordable coverage, but it takes care of you for the daily things that happen in your life. Right. Perfect example of it. You're probably going to lose your keys. Yeah. We got a way to get your keys back if you lose them. And you guarantee it. We guarantee it. And or you'll we, pay for it. Yeah. If we can't get them back, we pay for it. Yeah. Right. Patrick, let me tell you something. Your breath of fresh air. Everybody in our office here after visiting with you, we're all signing up for this. Folks, there are, there are actually good guys in the auto warranty business, and we happen to find them here. Really appreciate you coming in and talking about that. Thanks, Drew. Thank you. Folks, welcome back to the Wild West Crypto Show. I'm Drew. I'm Brent. And we have with us Chris Wood of the Pixelmatic Project. Chris, how are you doing today? I'm doing real good, gentlemen. How about yourselves? Very well, very well. So let me ask you something. I see space in the background. I mean, you guys, uh, you're going to have to tell us about Pixelmatic. Or are you going to, you guys going to take us to outer space? <laughs> we are taking you to a whole multiverse, gentlemen. We're taking you all out into the stars indeed. We're making a massive multiplayer online strategy game, which is powered by a side chain of Bitcoin, which is liquid, developed by Blockstream. Blockstream. So, um, which is very exciting indeed. It means that uh, a lot of our Bitcoiners and gamers out there can go out into the stars, make some awesome spaceships, and then trade them peer to peer as well and gain a portable currency while doing it. So it's very, very exciting indeed. Absolutely. Well, well you know, gaming is the rage, right? Yes. And, and it shocks me because other than, <laughs> and, and look, you can tell we're a couple of cowboys, but we did play Pong. You you don't, may not even know what that is. I know Pong. <laughs> I love Pong. Are you kidding me? Come on. <laughs> he, he played Pong. I did that. I did that uh, boxing. You know, oh, yeah. yeah. Punch yeah. out. Boxing. You're thinking the punch out yeah. one, Mike Tyson? Oh yeah, no, no. Well, yeah. no. Oh, Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson wasn't even born when I was playing it. <laughs> hey, hey, so Chris, Chris, tell us. You know, kind of dive into this because there's a lot of different things. What sets y'all apart? Obviously, the ability to go into these games, which people have been doing even before crypto, where they found ways to create value and the things they're doing. So, kind of give us an overview of of what the you know what the gaming stuff is. Then, how where y'all are in the project? Have you launched yet? Kind of you know, give us an overview. Yeah, no problem at all. No problem at all. So th there's quite a few uh, blockchain games out there at the moment. I think, you know, there's a lot of hype around, you know, NFTs uh, and you'll see like Axie Infinities out there. They're absolutely smashing it in the Philippines and everything. But what we're doing a little bit different from those guys is actually we're a traditional game studio. We've been around since 2011 and our CEO comes from some like massive game studio called Ubisoft, which is just like a global uh, company. They make games like Assassin's Creed and, and so on um and yeah so what we're doing is we're coming from a traditional gaming background and we're actually not forcing our players at all to download any dApps like metamask or anything like that to play the game they simply play it and the actual cryptocurrency what we call inf goes directly into their game account and they can kind of utilize that and withdraw that um should they wish so we're actually approaching the average gamer as well as uh, crypto and, and blockchain games as well, if you know what I mean. So what the, the real drive here is for adoption for Bitcoin, because I think that's what we, we all really want here. And you know, our background is both crypto and gaming. 
And what we're hoping to do is kind of roll out a bit of a Trojan horse, right? You know, to say, come out, play this game, have a really good time. But hey, there's actually this really cool side thing that you can do um, where, you know, you can kind of come into this, this crypto versus such. And that is really exciting because players, you know, they spend that sort of second life on the, these things. You know, I mean, I had friends back in the day, they used, they used to call going to sleep logging off. You know what I mean? <laughs> like they're kind of living in this digital world. And now, you know, all that time that people put in thousands of hours in some cases, they can actually kind of extract value from that, right? So in our case, the spaceships that they build, they craft, they customize, they can then trade with other players using this portable currency. And I, I just think that's super exciting. <laughs> yeah, I find that interesting. So I got to ask a question, you know, um, being, being an old fart, you know, I look at some of these memes that you see on, on these various shows and stuff. And so, you know, there's the, the, the deal of the girl that, you know, uh, wants to, wants to go to the bedroom and the guy's so busy playing the game that she can't get his attention. Is that real? <laughs> <sighs> um, talking firsthand. It's, I mean, it's happened. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I've, got, I've got a three-year-old daughter. I, I do my best, guys. I do my best. I'm a, I, I like to do that. <laughs> All right, that, now, now a serious question. <laughs> Talk to us about Liquid. I've heard a lot about Liquid. I don't know that we've ever had them on the show. But but talk about liquid because you know I see a lot of stuff about it. Not sure that I fully understand it. So sure. uh, give me a thumbnail of that if you would. Yeah, so liquid is a side chain of Bitcoin which is pegged one to one. It was developed by Blockstream that actually recently just got unicorn status. They uh, they raised two hundred and ten million in a Series B. I don't know if you saw it, guys, but uh, very exciting indeed. They've been building this technology. And what it allows for is very rapid settlement and also issuance of assets such as our security token that we're raising money on and also um, our in-game currency. So it really, um, it, it basically allows for more to be done on Bitcoin, which is very exciting. And on top of that, you can actually put lightning rails as well. So we can go to really, really uh, instantaneous transfer using the liquid network. So it's, it's very exciting indeed. And uh, Blockstream's CSO, Samson Mao, is our CEO. So we work very, very closely with okay. Blockstream. <laughs> good, good. Hey, so let's talk a little bit about the game itself. You talked about sure. space and spaceships. So kind of give us in about a minute an overview of the experience. Right. So you're the commander of the United Soul Federation, and your job is to fight back some Arsehole aliens, really, to be honest, they're coming to destroy us. And it's a massive game with uh, hundreds of thousands of players. We're currently in the alpha at the moment, so people are playing. Um, it's a bit, it's very early days, but we're iterating. And basically, yes, the players will come together to fight against an alien menace. Um, but in our game, the actions of the community actually matter. So if the aliens come to like destroy Earth or something, the players have to fight back. If they fail, Earth could be completely obliterated and we are some nomadic race, uh, you know, sailing the skies to try and find a new home. So it's a really exciting project where the story is kind of directed by the community. Okay. And so, so I would, in the game, we get in and obviously now, you know, 3D and virtual reality and all that. Yeah. Is, uh, is part of it, is th some of those elements in this as well? Uh, not VR currently. We're trying to keep, when you're building a game, you have to be very careful with scope. So our core loop is that you have a fleet of ships that you manage. And it's kind of like a tactical game where you'll, you know, tell your ships where to go to defeat the enemy. So you'll be doing pincer and moves and working with other players to make, you know, set traps and things like that. And also building. So, you know, space stations, defense platforms, trying to build out the, the, the territory as such. We're actually doing this, what we call a procedurally generated galaxy, which means there are literally millions of stars in the game that you can explore and start your own territory. So it's very exciting indeed. You can put your foot in the game as such and create your, your legacy, you know? Yeah, let, yeah. Me, let me sum this up. So basically what you're telling me is, is, is you got this great stylized game. The great thing about it is, is that the uh, users don't really even realize that they're into crypto till they're way into the game yeah. and way into crypto, which is great for adoption. Right. You've been able to bring liquid and, and then you got some lightning rails and some other things. So even though you're building it around Bitcoin, you know, you're not, uh, you're not saddled with some of Bitcoin's, uh, uh, the negatives, which is the the speed of it and so on and so forth. And, exactly. and so the final question is, are they really playing against the house or 
is everybody kind of playing against everybody else. In the beginning, they're playing against the house. So we're actually developing some really powerful AI. We're running some machine learning experiments and things, which we're really trying to advance this, which is which is really exciting because our CTO is right. very, very into AI. Well, I'll and, tell you what, when, when you start seeing spaceships, the shape of a hat like this, <laughs> all right, then, 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 then you know I got into the game. So we'll anyway, make we'll, one just for you, Brent. Yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. make one just for you, man. <laughs> all right. Exactly. Well, thank you, man. Yeah, Chris, I, that's awesome. Look forward to learning more thanks for coming on the wild west crypto show and best of luck and keep us informed thank you so much for having me gentlemen it's a lot of fun and by the way before we go what are you doing for labor day barbecue what's on the grill let me tell you some barbecue in texas as you can imagine we're everything good beef and sausage <laughs> and ribs buddy yeah everything's on the grill in texas yeah. if you move slowly you get on the grill too Oh, <laughs> hey, Chris, thank, thank you, you so man. much. Have man. a good one. Thank Thanks. you. Crypto Show will be back here in two minutes. Howdy, folks. My name is Jonathan Kine. Here at Cryptocurrency Wire, we cover the latest news in the blockchain market while also helping innovators in the space reach large audiences in the mainstream, particularly those interested in finance. Cryptocurrency Wire is just one of 50 plus brands part of the Investor Brand Network, a platform that we've been developing for more than 15 years now. Collectively, these 50 plus brands have more than 2 million social media likes and followers. And when one of our clients or event partners has news, we offer direct reach to these audiences, as well as article syndication to thousands of news outlets such as Apple News and MarketWatch. If you want to reach new audiences with your next big announcement or need a multifaceted communications plan that incorporates original content creation, visit us online at CryptocurrencyWire.com. You can also get the latest news by following us on Twitter at CryptoNetWire. Welcome back to the Wild West Crypto Show. I'm Drew. I'm Brent. And we have with us, as we do every week, Jonathan Kime with the three greatest stories in crypto. Jonathan, how are you doing? Oh, doing really good. I've been having a lot of fun uh, with my new gadget here. Uh oh. Oh, well, show us it real quick. What you got? All right. Well, it's uh, Z Fold 3. They've had these foldable phones for a while, um, but they had a couple of issues at the beginning, uh, mainly the, the bendable screen on the inside was a little bit too tacky and wasn't like glass, but this this new one really hits the mark. Really? really? So, so it goes from like a phone to a tablet almost? It sure does. So there's actually two screens. There's one on the front side, like a normal phone, and then you open it up and then you got your big screen in the middle that kind of gets sandwiched and protected as you uh, go along your day. Yeah, Brent, he's, the, he's always on the cutting edge. He's <laughs> yeah. the king of tech. So there yeah, you go. I, I could break that thing in three minutes. All right, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Speaking of three, let's go to the first one. British tween, teen, I assume is what that's really supposed to say, earns almost 400000 on NFT sales. Now listen to this, without a bank. Yeah, yeah, there you go. I, they need one of those phones that's got screens on all three sides because this kid's into some money. <laughs> yeah, he has no problem buying a new phone, I'm sure. And I just think it's crazy because without crypto, this would have flat out not been possible you know, for a 12-year-old boy. And he did this on a school vacation. Uh, so it didn't take him very long at all uh, to pull this off. He tokenized digital pictures of whale emojis, and the story went viral on Twitter. So now, of course, there's a lot more inspiration for others who also thought that they might have been too young to earn this amount of money. Man, we need to hire the kid. Yeah, well, well you know, Brett, <laughs> and I will tell you, it is tween because he's 12, not 13. Oh, so it's the right, he's a tweener, you. they call it. Yeah. Um, you, you know what? And, and Jonathan, you really hit on something, and it is true. We talk about how cryptocurrency is going to lift more people on the planet than anything ever has because it's really democratizing oh. the ability to go out there and innovate and get rewarded for it. And that's what he did. You know, and this guy was unbanked. I'm sure a banker will let him have an account now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, gr great story. Hey, so listen, speaking of another great story, here we are, just hit September. The total market cap of public crypto stocks has quadrupled since January. Dive into that. 
Yes, yeah, so in less than a year, the combined market cap of the publicly traded crypto stocks have surged from about $25 billion in January to $100 billion today. Of course, that's not just rising stock values pushing the figure, but also new entries into the market, uh, like Coinbase, of course. Uh, just this year, 16 digital asset firms have gone public. Yeah, that's a big story. And you know what? And I have to say this, and here the U.S. won't approve an ETF. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I mean, it's unfortunate, but that's the reality of it. And, you know, Jonathan, we were visiting with a, I'm actually a Air Force, retired Air Force colonel here. And part of the reason that we spent some time with him today, and Brent has known him for a long time, but um, he was in our office for a meeting on Monday and his wife were talking about, we we're talking about being in crypto and they just go like this, like so many people do out of ignorance really. And said, no, we don't want anything. His wife is going, we don't want to have anything to do with that. He comes over to me and he goes, Hey, can I come over and talk to y'all about it? <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to know what this is. Oh yeah, sure he did. All right, let's do the last one here. Mayoral candidate pledges to make New York City the most cryptocurrency friendly city in the nation. Now it's going to take a little while because right now most of it's underwater <laughs> there in New York City. But tell us about that one, Jonathan. Well, I think this headline really ties everything together, not just the two previous headlines, but everything that's happening in the world right now. Whether you're a 12 year old boy, senior industry veteran, or you know somewhere in between, crypto can be a very big deal uh, to your personal life. So uh, I guess the big question is, you know, who would have thought candidates would be leading with crypto as one of the main reasons you should elect them? No kidding. And, and, and let me tell you, there's a whole community, as you well know, going to jump behind him for nothing more than that. You yeah. Know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, and, and, you know, you want your leaders to lead. And right. you don't lead from the back. And so SEC and everybody, I'm talking, I'm talking to you. And so, you know, you got to get out in front of the technology, get out in front of the innovation. No, you're not necessarily going to pass laws and edicts and, and do all the kinds of things. That, that it's going to end up being 100%, but leading from the back is really the recipe for a disaster. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you know, Jonathan, I thought it was interesting. A few weeks ago, they were testifying before the Senate about cryptocurrencies and all that because, you know, Janet Yellen and this administration doesn't really care for them. And after all the testimony, most of the senators wanted to learn more and begin to invest in crypto. So when they learn about it and understand what it is, oh, yeah. they want to get involved in it. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, it really is. It really is. You, you know, Jonathan, we talk about it every week. And, and you know what? Share, we got about 30 seconds. You guys are not only cryptocurrency. And now we've been working together for probably over a couple <laughs> of years, well over a couple of years. And, uh, but y'all are really the forefront of the news in 50, how many different topics, areas of business? Yeah, we have more than 50 different brands now. We just launched another. Uh, we're basically at the nucleus of any financial oriented sector. See, that is amazing. So, folks, I'm telling you, one-stop shop for the latest news and all this stuff. And, Jonathan, we really appreciate y'all's partnership. And I know we'll even give a shout-out to Mike. I know he lives actually in our area, and we've never met. But one day we will. But thank you <laughs> guys for all that y'all do. Tell Havila we got you some coffee cups coming. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, it's been a blast. Looking forward to another few years and beyond. You got right. it, buddy. Thank folks, you, man. Wild West Crypto Show will be back here in two minutes. The automotive industry has always evolved to meet technological change. But today, we are experiencing a revolutionary paradigm shift. Exponential innovation is quickly reimagining the future of the industry. And at Carnomaly, we are pioneering the solutions to meet its rapid trajectory. Our fleet of digital services harness the power of blockchain technology to create the new industry standard for accurate, transparent car buying. It includes car chain, a comprehensive blockchain database that maintains a historical digital profile for each vehicle. Cardify, a decentralized auto financing solution that offers peer-to-peer -peer lending using the unlimited value of cryptocurrency. And Carnomaly, a new digital platform for both buyers, sellers, and dealers that recreates the outdated, ineffective auto trading process. Discover how Carnomaly is leading innovation in the new age of automotive through these solutions and more. Discover Carnomaly.
Howdy, folks. Welcome back to the Wild West Crypto Show. I'm Drew. I'm Brent. And we have with us Matt from 3Speak. And, and Matt, uh, you're in Eastern Europe, but you don't sound like a Texan. <laughs> there's, a, there's not many people that sound like Texans out here, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so Matt, y'all have a project called 3Speak. Give our, you know, our listeners out there, and I will tell you, most of our listeners are not YouTubers, not online, because we're on regular radio, regular television, so we like to talk about our redneck buddies out there feeding hay to the cattle and all that. They typically have quite a bit of money in their pocket, and we try to educate them on crypto so we can get them to invest. So what is 3Speak about? I mean, 3Speak is basically an app that runs on a Web3 protocol. And web, so currently we're all on web two, Facebook and Google and Twitter. It's all web two. And what that basically means is that Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter owns your ass. You know, if you say something that pisses him off, you're gone. Right. Or he can shadow ban you. Same with, with Facebook. You see, I think it was today or yesterday that Facebook released some information that anyone that types anything about politics into Facebook, that, that it just, it's just not going to show anymore, you know, and in whatever definition politics is for them is, is whatever they choose. And so things are just going to, you know, your voice stops being heard, you know? Um, so, I mean, there's two, there's two angles that we're approaching this at. It's like, we, we're trying to, we are building web three, which web three is basically where you own your account on a decentralized layer outside of the platforms, independently from the platforms. Right? So on Facebook, they own your account. You have a password to it, but really they own it. Right. And they can turn it off anytime on web three. The account system is on a decentralized layer, just like say Bitcoin is a decentralized blockchain, but and there's no entity behind it. There's no um, CEO or corporation behind Bitcoin. So you have a decentralized ability to distribute currency to each other to distribute value, and no one can stop you. With what we've built on Hive, it's a Web3 account system that's outside of the platforms on a distributed layer. So you own your accounts, you own your followers, you own your communities. You can create currencies on it that are decentralized and you own your content, your content content stored peer to peer. So no one can delete you off and just say, Hey, we don't like this guy's politics or whatever. So just delete his account. That's not possible on there because it's on a distributed layer. So it protects things like free speech. It creates this web three. Everyone's moving towards web three. Um, and we've basically built it already. Um, and, and so that's kind of, that's the, 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 the base protocol that 3Speak, the video platform, runs on. So as a result, on 3Speak, you, you own your account, you own your content, and you can create videos on there. Now, I, I, can, I can hear people around the world going, bring on three, bring on three, bring on three. I mean, you know, <laughs> so when is, when is three going to be brought on? I mean, we, we, we're just about to apply for funding from the Hive blockchain. So the Hive blockchain has a really cool system where they have a pot of money, which is actually... Justin Sun's old money on Steam. I don't know if you guys know who Justin Sun is, but he attacked the he attacked the Steam blockchain about a year and a half ago and tried to take it over and move the community to to Tron. And the community were like, "Hell no!" They're, they're just like Texans, you know. They're like, "Hell freaking no! We're not going." So they forked the chain, they copied everything, moved all the all the balances across to a new chain called Hive, and then they took Justin Sun's currency. They left. Obviously, you can't touch Steam. That's that was his chain by that time. Time he took it over. But we zeroed his balance on Hive and then moved that balance to a fund that now we distribute to the community to fund projects, right? So it's like you took over our chain, you trod on us, and now we just made a new chain and we zeroed your balance and used that balance to distribute to the community, right? And the whole community left the Steam chain and they moved across to Hive, right? Welcome to blockchain, you know, it's, it's, it's class. Like it was a proper war. It was a war, man. It was crazy. Um, <laughs> so we, we're about to apply for funding for that tomorrow. Dan and I, my, my partner, we've already spent um, a ton of money on 3Speak and building the Speak Network protocol underneath it, which it runs on. Um, and we're about to finish it off uh, with, with the last little bit of funding from the Hive community, which is going to happen over the next few months. And so we expect to have the first token out, let's say, between three and six months. We don't know because it's, it's all new software. Um, and you just never know with this stuff. It's, it's all new. It can be all sorts of problems and bugs, but... Um, yeah, say three, three to six months, we should have the first token drop out. And the way, the way that token drop is going to launch, we're not going to like put it on an exchange or sell it or anything because we want to be decentralized in the same way that Satoshi didn't ever give himself Bitcoin. We're not going to give ourselves any of the token. What we're going to do is we're going to drop it to the Hive community. So if you own Hive, you will receive some of the mining token to this ecosystem. And then you, so once you receive the mining token, 
you can plug that in to run infrastructure. So you can run like storage nodes. We're going to make it really easy for, for anyone, even grandma will be able to do it. Um, but the idea is you run e infrastructure for the ecosystem. So you run like storage con uh, software, which is basically storing videos on your computer or, or on your own server. Uh, you, you, you can run uh, content delivery systems without really understanding what that means. And the idea is all these things are that they provide value to the network to keep the network running well, but it's all peer to peer. So we basically taking YouTube, YouTube does all that for you, right? Whereas what we're doing is we, we're allowing the peers of the network to do that for themselves and for each other. And then the, 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 the ecosystem will detect who's doing what and distribute the speak token to the people. But in order to do, to provide that infrastructure, you have to have the mining token. And the mining tokens will be dropped to the hive holders. So basically, if you want to get involved, you can you can hold hive, um, and then you'll get you'll get some of the claim drops over over the next few months that happen. Hey, hey Brent, I, we better go get some hive before we release yeah, this I'm, show. I'm telling you, I'm sitting here thinking the same thing. Yeah, but I, I got to tell you, do you see this? This flix.net, f l i x x dot n e t. We have been banned. Yeah. We've been banned on Twitter. Been banned on not fully banned. We've just been reported. So we have been on our, our own flex network. We built this completely uh, uncensorable. We own this Beautiful. network, and we and it's and it's fixing to explode. But it seems like the functionality that you guys are creating because we don't have a social media platform with this. Oh, yeah. But what you guys yes. are creating be a nice dovetail with what we're creating. And so, Man. yeah. You guys are the exact people. I'm so happy that you just said that because basically what, we, what we're intending to do with this, we're going to decentralize it so we're, we're out of the loop. So if they come and arrest me tomorrow, nothing. In fact, we've got a desktop app that runs on the local desktop that our, our site shut down a couple of weeks ago because we got attacked. With the desktops up and running, you can never stop it now because it's on the person's computer, right? So it's, it's, it's unstoppable now. Um, and so what we want to do is all these web free tools, like creating account systems that are outside of your control, but on a distributed layer, creating tokenization systems, creating um, communities that can't be deleted, creating follower lists that can't be deleted. Those web three tools, as long as they exist on a decentralized layer, they're incredibly powerful. And our plan is basically to help guys like you, who you don't want to spend hundreds of development hours to like, implement all this stuff on your own and build it in a decentralized way what you've got is you've got a platform that you run already and you're doing a great job clearly and it's like if we can come along with some tools that you can implement in a couple of weeks with the developers that charge you charge you very little money then instead of you having to spend six months or a year building all of this infrastructure out yourself it's a couple of weeks worth of dev work and you can implement it into your platform keep doing exactly the same thing you're doing now but now you're, you're mining this governance token and you're, you're starting to have influence within, within the network on a distributed Web3 layer. So you have a Web3 platform and your users can log into your platform. They can post, you can curate the posts, all sorts of things like this, you know. That's where, that's where Web3 is going, you know. We, we, re we really want to appeal to guys like you who have been censored everywhere else. It's like once you own your account outside of our centralized control, we can't stop you from posting anymore, you know? The community can, yeah. but that's up to the community hey, Matt, to do, right? You give the power to the community, you know? Hey, Matt, we often talk about the fact that we have a face for radio. I just want you to know you have a face for arrest, and hopefully they don't do that to you. <laughs> Stay on. We're going to visit some more after we get off the show. And I'll tell you what, folks, we'll be back on the Wild West Crypto Show in two minutes. Are you about to miss out on the next big boom? In the 1970s, the U.S. military tapped the power of the human mind. Elite soldiers learned how to see and know things across space and time, a form of psychic espionage called remote viewing. Today, some of the top remote viewers in the world are looking ahead to our new digital monetary system. Each week, the crypto viewing team looks for the untold secrets and inner workings of cryptocurrencies. There is going to be a quick peak and a quick rise. Who are the players? IBM teaming with a large Asian conglomerate. What's their intent? Sense of the mass adoption. We're talking global. Which will rise to the top. Watch future events unfold before your very eyes. Sign up today at patreon.com slash crypto viewing. Now stay tuned for the good, bad, and ugly.
Folks, welcome back to the Wild West Crypto Show. I'm Drew. I'm Brent. And Brent, it's time for the good, the better, the best. And the best. Yes. So, you know, <laughs> folks, let me tell you something. It, and it's great to be able to do something like this. Brent, oh, yeah. To oh, share yeah. good stories. And, folks, uh, so many things have been going on that you could, you, you, everywhere that there is, that there are um, horrible things that are happening, there's always a silver lining, there's always shining light. And John Schneider, uh, for you old gray-headed folks like us, actually he doesn't gray, have gray hair, his gray <laughs> beard, I have no hair. So anyway, you older folks like us, you know who uh, Duke's a hazard was? Well, John Schneider was Bo Duke, and he carries on today. He's a great musician. Oh, yeah. He and his wife, Alicia, we met with him uh, up in, in Texarkana a couple of weeks ago. We're actually launching an initiative that will launch in 2022 that is really kind of trying to pull people together. Because, folks, we've gone through and talked about it. 95% of folks in this country believe with, agree with each other on probably 90% of all issues. Yet we're dividing each other based on the 10% or 5% on either side that we don't agree with. So what, what we're going to try to do with those guys, and they're just good folks, and they prove it again in, in what they're doing. You're going to see an interview in a minute where their farm in Louisiana got flooded by Ida. And Brent, what I'm impressed about with their, what they're doing, their farm is still kind of underwater. And we are actually, we're sending a, a group of people up there from here in Texas. We're going ourselves to help them cut trees and clear and do all that so that they can get back in business. But since they can't really do anything, Brent, they're headed back to Tennessee to help yeah. other people got flooded. Yeah, well, and I'll tell you what, you know, um, someone that has a servant's heart, just because you've got some personal catastrophe, uh, doesn't stop you having a servant's heart. You and, you know, and they're underwater. They got no electricity. Yeah, they're, they're telling us it's good that we're coming next week because we couldn't get in to do anything this week. And so what are they doing? They're picking up and they're going to help uh, another catastrophe. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, part of I've been communicating with John and Alicia all day today because we're getting ready to go next week. And, uh, you know, I'm, we said, what do we need to bring? Folks, let me tell you something. Not only are we bringing our entire staff here at the Wild West Crypto Show and the other things we do, we're taking all the water we can take. Brent's got his some of his contractors that are loading up their trucks and going over there. We're taking chainsaws and generators. Alicia was telling me earlier in a message, she said, we don't have power. And they're telling us it's going to be four to six weeks until we do. And we said, we'll just bring several generators of as much fuel as we can bring and leave them there with you. And then we'll work at work the uh, back into this thing out. And folks, if everybody just got up and helped somebody out that needed a hand, Brent, what we did when we had the, the freeze oh, yeah. here. Yeah. Well, and you know, the, the interesting thing is when we had the freeze, there were a lot of people woefully unprepared. Sure. So guess what? That generator got used. A lot of this other stuff we're going to use again got used. You know, the sad thing is, is where when we had the big ice storm, a lot of people were enjoying sticking it to Texas. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, guess what? You know, just because y'all are flooded in your subways up in New York City and and then all the way from Louisiana all the way up the the river basin, you know, we're not we're not enjoying your catastrophe by any stretch of imagination. We're thinking about you and praying for you. And we're coming to help you. Yeah, and, and let me tell you something. I'll add one more thing, and then we're going to watch this interview that John just did on the uh, on Fox and Friends this morning. But let me tell you something. I can tell you, and I know for a fact, because I was there in the forefront of this for that entire freeze event, not one time when I was delivering propane, delivering food and blankets <laughs> to other people, not one time did I say, who did you vote for? These are fellow Americans, and by God, we got to stick together and help each other out. Oh, amen. And and that's what it's got to become. I mean, it's got, we've got to become united as Americans, you know, just like I got brothers, you know, we, we have a good fight here and there, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. But in the, in the final analysis, we're all sp part of what we call the Bates mafia. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, we need to become the American mafia. Yeah. You bet. So folks, thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned. This is a great interview. And if there's anything you want to do by the time you're seeing this, we will arrive on September the 9th in Louisiana and folks, you're welcome to come out and help us. So stay tuned for this. Dukes of Hazard star John Schneider, pictured right there, fortunately was not home when the storm plowed through his area, leaving his house and studio damaged. And look at that, a tree on top of one of the iconic General Lee cars from the TV show. And John Schneider joins us right now from Holden, Louisiana. John, uh, I know you were... Hey, good morning, good morning. Uh, listen, um, I know you and your family are just having the worst time. I think you were in in uh, Nashville a couple of days ago when the storm came ashore, tr and then ultimately we in, you were trying to raise money uh, we for people. Sparta, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. 
Well, we're raising, uh, we're gathering supplies and things for the uh, for the folks in Waverly. It actually looks like the folks in Waverly may be hit again. Uh, so we are going to drive back to Tennessee later this afternoon so that we can distribute that stuff tomorrow because, you know, you need to, you can't stop a humanitarian act just because a tree falls on your house. Right. You know, you've got to do what you said you were going to do. Absolutely. We've had a, we've had a pretty rough time here, but <clears throat> Ida hit hit landfall it made landfall in grand isle louisiana uh, one report i saw it was a cat five um which is the worst that's that's ever happened here um we have trees down everywhere i'm about four miles from the, the studio generally. because i didn't have any service we won't have electricity for six weeks uh but that's not the worst of it what's happening now is in 2016 we had a uh, the floodwaters on the tickfall river where we live got to uh 22 feet well according to the national weather service at about six o'clock this afternoon this evening the water is going to be at 21 six mm. so that's only six inches below the worst flood ever in where i'm sitting right now so yeah. those waters are on their way from the storm that is that is happening up north it's just a mess but when i look at what you were just showing <coughs> Uh, by the way, those are community people coming out to help. Mm -hmm. We need to throw away all this BS about uh, division. We need to remain united. The biggest strength we have in this country is ourselves. We need to do this and stay like this. Throw all this other hogwash away because as you can see yeah. we need each other desperately absolutely we don't need the government coming in uh, and, and by the way i call this we had a hurricane we're about to have a flood and we're about to have the the probably the worst natural disaster that can be because apparently biden is going to come show his face in louisiana and uh i i i, I wish he wouldn't i wish he wouldn't we've got more problems on our hands we don't need him well, Obviously, there are things going on in this in this country now. People need your prayer. They need your help. They right. need you to be a friend. Well, with the president coming, that means he will bring uh, disaster relief, and that's what your state uh, does need. <laughs> John, um, you know, as we look at the flooding, historic all over the place, when it comes to you, and we saw how your place is damaged and devastated. How how can folks watch and yeah. help? You know, and and you you've been helping raise money for other disaster victims. How can we help well, you? <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you. I'm I'm never one to ask for help, but I tell you what, uh, that picture you saw that's our store. So, if you enjoy Dukes or Smallville or the Haves and Have. Nuts. If I've made you smile in the last 42 years, then go to johnschneiderstudios.com. Um, get yourself a movie. Get yourself some music. Uh, get something. Our sites are, are, we're having a lot of traffic, thankfully, right now. So yeah. please try more than once. You also have an option to rent a movie. You can okay. look on there and rent a movie. But listen, go out there and be a good friend to somebody. Be a good neighbor. I appreciate it. We'll get through this, okay? God bless you, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Right. Thank you very much, John. All right, good luck to you and your family and everybody else who's suffering right now. Thank you, sir. Once again, the website is johnschneiderstudios.com. Imagine a streaming platform with compelling content uncensored. Discover Flix at Flix.net. News, financial, opinion, lifestyle, and music. Flix, telling it like it is. Watch Flix now at Flix.net. Available on Roku and Amazon Fire and coming soon to Apple TV. Welcome back to the Wild West Crypto Show. I'm Brent Bates, and it's my Over the Fence Post segment. And I'll tell you what I'm going to talk about today, and, and it's kind of a concept that some people might consider uh, ethereal or 
or uh, conceptual, but it's it's actually something very important that I think we all need to kind of come to grips with. And, and many times, I'll tell you a quick story. I was on a on a church board one time, <clears throat> and we had hired a pastor, and his fi- he finally got his chance to speak. And this is a small South Texas community church, and he gets up, and the first thing he does is he moves all the furniture and has just a music stand out there, and he's going to preach in, in that kind of a style, which there's nothing wrong with this. But we have a bunch of elderly people that are used to the style teaching that they had been receiving. And so literally the first meeting we had after that, uh, several of the older guys on the board said, well, we need to just cut this guy loose. And I'm kind of like, why, why? He's a great guy. I like him, you know, so on and so forth. They said, well, because if he'll make that kind of uh, mistake of worrying more about his comfort than the comfort of his flock, you know, he's not going to be the right fit. And as I've gotten older, I've come to realize you know, how spot on those guys are. And so when you hear older guys like myself that are lamenting against this, that, or the other thing, and you can say, oh, well, they're just older and they just don't understand, I have news for you. Uh, We may not understand some of the technology that you young people are committing the atrocities you uh, commit toward each other, but we understand the general depravity of man. And so what I want to speak about today is, is the fact that we have a ton of, of, uh, inefficiencies uh, in our economic system. And here's what I mean by that. You know, every time there's a law passed or a regulation passed or, God forbid, a new government department created to solve some minor infraction or to create some level of uh, data for the government, there's a cost to that. And so, you know, in the old days, you know, your, your car had an engine you know, it didn't have the smog stuff on it. It didn't have all the anti-braking. It didn't have all the bells and whistles that it has on it today. And most people could keep their car running and the cars ran for quite a while. And in fact, they were driving around in big, huge cars. Okay. Well, now forward today. And what do we have? We have all the different gadgets and all the governors and it doesn't let it go faster than this. And it makes sure that it only gets kind of this kind of gas mileage. And it's got all this for anti-smog and anti-this and anti-anti-anti. And before long, the cars don't run as well. Our economy is basically the same way. So we have got so much unnecessary government intervention and government regulation that it has basically made it where it's almost impossible for a young couple, both of them working, to make a living. And the problem is not making the living for the children that you have in in your household. It's the fact that literally everything you buy has got a lot of added costs, costs that you would not pay for if it was put out on its own line item. So in other words, if the line item was, uh, you know, this government regulation costs, uh, raises the cost of your car by $250, do you want that option? Most of what is out there, you wouldn't buy the option because you don't see the value of it. Now, what the government says is we're smarter than you. We're helping you spend your money because we think that either climate change or whatever ill of the world or perceived ill of the world they're trying to solve, they're going to spend your money because they're going to mandate that it has to be in the price of your product. Anybody look at their cell phone bill lately? And you look at the cell phone bill and there's an FCC uh, charge for this and an FCC charge for that. And, you know, there's a locator charge and there's a, you know, all kinds of wild stuff. And everybody's trying to go, where do these people, who are these people? You know, where do they get all this money? Well, guess what? Then you go into the gas station and you buy gas. Well, you know, now you got a gas tax. And if you buy oil, you know, that's all been taxed. And so we have basically turned taxing and regulating into a cottage industry. And now we wonder why so many people, one, don't want to work. Because why would you want to work if the government will just give you free money, which we know it's not free. Because going out to work, it's hard to go out and get a job where you can actually make a living wage. Well, guess what? As someone that has companies, it's hard to make, it's hard to provide your people with a living wage because of all of the intrusion of the government and all of the other regulatory agencies that you have in the cost structure and the pricing structure of what you do. Well, 
So basically the bottom line is this, we are just about to choke our economy to where it is no longer gonna be an economy. Now, right side is, is guess what? In the world of crypto, things are flourishing. Why are they flourishing? You know, you don't have a lot of that regulation. And all of a sudden becomes peer to peer. You know, you can, it's almost kind of bartering, but doing it digitally in regards to transactions between people. And it's ushering in the new frontier. My only hope and prayer is, is that we will quickly unleash the economy from the ravages of all the idiotic regulation and legal uh, mandating that goes on. And I'm not talking about mass. I'm talking about all the things that are mandated that we as business people have to adhere to and have to get involved in our business that's not worth the price in our minds, and it's certainly not worth the price in the consumer's mind. We'll be back next week on the Wild West Crypto, talking over the fence post. Imagine a streaming platform with compelling content, uncensored. Discover Flix at flix.net. News, financial, opinion, lifestyle, and music. Flix, telling it like it is. Watch Flix now at flix.net. Available on Roku and Amazon Fire and coming soon to Apple TV. Folks, welcome back to the Wild West Crypto Show. I'm Drew, and it is time for my Cowboy Logic segment. And I'll tell you what I want to do with all the things going on around the world and, you know, last really 10, 12 years where we've begun to see strife and people really taking sides and digging their heels in. And it hasn't been good for us as a nation, for us as people. Really, I mean, across the board, the amount of vitriol and everything is just horrible. And so, I, I want to put a, a message out there and have a little conversation about let, why don't we just meet in the middle? There's no country song that says, you start walking your way, I'll start walking mine. We'll meet in the middle between those old Georgia pines. And that's what I kind of propose. I have to tell you, we are working on a couple of initiatives that are that are things that we hope by going and taking that first step extended that olive branch and doing some things. We'll be announcing these things over the next few months where we're going to try to get as many people as we can. Because folks, I have to tell you, I talk to people from all sides. It's really funny. Lorraine Lamone, if you watch on our Flix network, Lorraine Lamone is a little firebrand. She's from Detroit, raised in the projects, you know, had been a liberal most of her life until her son asked her one day, uh, uh, she was talking about voting. She said, be sure and go out there and vote and be sure to go out there and vote for a Democrat. And he said, well, mama, why do I have to vote for a Democrat? And she said, because they're for the little people. And she said, there was a pause on the phone. He said, mama, how long do we have to be little? And she said, I just paused in my tracks and remembered that when I was raised in the projects, got welfare, food stamps, had all the government hands out, handouts, but she went to school, went to college and got her a good job. And when she did, and all of a sudden she didn't need that hand up, okay, she went, she went down to cut that stuff off, and they didn't want her to cut it off. They wanted to keep her having to go to them for the money because they could control her. And it was at that point that she really began to look around and say, you know what, this, that isn't what this is built about. We have talked to so many people. We bring them in our office every single week, and we welcome anyone in to have a conversation. But you know what? You look at all this stuff that we're sitting there battling. Folks, about probably 85, 90% of the things that both sides want for each other and our families, which is food and shelter and a good job, good education for our kids, a decent car. We all want those same things. But that 5 or 10% that we don't agree on is what we focus on. And then we hold it against each other. And it has brought us to where we are today. And so what we are going to try to do in this is celebrate some of the best things about America together with everybody that wants to come. And then the little things that we disagree on, because folks, we got to take this country back. And I have to tell you, there's going to be people on the hard left and there's going to be people on the hard right that are not going to like what we're doing. 
Because there was a guy that we were talking to. We have our own broadcast network, Flex. We're talking to a guy about maybe us doing something with him. And a comment that he made to us was, well, when I do my own network and I can do this and I can tell anybody I don't like to go F themselves. Now, folks, doesn't seem like bridge building to me. We want to have a conversation because if we can achieve, let me tell you, the United States and Russia, for the enemies we've been the whole Cold War, we knew that we had to come together and set aside our differences to defeat Hitler, and we did. And the world is better off for it. So, folks, we what we want to see happen, and I've got a little challenge out there, okay? What we want to see happen is I invite anyone with a differing opinion than mine that can be on that far left side to come over and let's have a conversation. I have to tell you, I'm t- talking about Lorraine Lamone. She's a little old black gal, okay? And so we're sitting in my office one day, and I said, you know, Lorraine, part of the problems that we have is we tend to stereotype. And what that means is that you go and you see someone and you assess them. They actually say within three seconds of laying your eyes on somebody, you've made all these opinions about them, whether they're right, wrong, or indifferent. The only way to find out if your opinion was right or wrong is if you go in and you engage in a conversation. And I did that with a guy that I worked with when I was out in Las Vegas. And he told me that he'd seen this guy pull up in a limousine and the guy ate a beautiful girl on either side of him, and he followed him around for the night, and he's betting a bunch of money on the tables and all that. And he said, he must be one of those dot-com millionaires. So towards the end of the evening, he walked up to him, and he said, hey, where'd you make all your money? And the guy looked at him, and he said, do you think I have a lot of money? He said, yeah, I'm watching you do this. He said, let me tell you something. I'm 40 years old. I've always wondered what it'd feel like to be wealthy. And he said, so I saved for 10 years for enough money. I saved $50,000 to treat myself to this for my 40th birthday. But had he not had a conversation, he would have assumed things about him that weren't true. And folks, we do that every single day. And so if we have conversations, which I love doing, I'll I'll visit with anyone. Tell you what, we got these since we have our own broadcast network. Look at that mug. Nice little pretty red on the inside and everything else. Folks, reach out to us, comment. Anyone that is willing to have a conversation with me, an honest conversation, where we talk about what's real, not about how we feel about things, because folks, we all say things in anger that we typically end up regretting. I've done it a hundred times. I've done a million times in my life. So folks, anyone out there who has a differing opinion than me, can we get a conversation? I'd be happy to record it and put it out there or do anything else. And I'll give you one of these mugs if you're willing to do it. And I'll do it with one person or a hundred people. Folks, we got to bring this country back together or we're going to lose it to socialism. I doubt I'll ever agree with Nancy Pelosi or AOC or some of these other folks, but studies show well over 85% of us Americans believe in the basic tenets that this country was founded on. And we need to pull together and we need to alienate that other 15%. Thanks for tuning in to the Wild West Crypto Show, folks. Listen, let's meet in the middle and make this country everything it has the potential to be. We'll see you again next week.